diaphragm type carburetor used in a benzo tool. It differs from a conventional carburetor by the presence of a diaphragm fuel pump in the upper part of the body. Another membrane, located at the bottom of the carburetor, replaces the role of the float we are used to. To operate the pump, a pulsating, variable airflow is required. To do this, the fitting located on the top cover of the carburetor is connected to the engine crankcase. Also here is the bracket for the adjusting screw, throttle. Below, on the left side, there are two screws for adjusting the amount of fuel. Air damper. On the right side is the fuel inlet. Below, the air lever and the throttle lever. A rubber gasket is installed under the top cover of the carburetor. Below is a layer of flexible glass textilite. A lid paired with a gasket divides the space into several compartments. Inlet chamber. Fuel inlet from fitting. Bypass chamber. Exhaust chamber. Fuel filter outlet. The layer of flexible fiberglass performs two functions. One part of it works like a membrane. And two semi-cutouts play the role of flap valves. When the engine piston moves up, a negative pressure is created in the crankcase, vacuum. Through the fitting of the top cover of the carburetor, this vacuum acts on the membrane, the bypass chamber, bending it upwards. A vacuum is also created under the membrane. Atmospheric pressure forces the fuel from the tank to move into the low pressure zone. Fuel bends the intake valve pedal and fills the bypass chamber. When the piston moves down, it creates a positive pressure in the crankcase that exceeds atmospheric pressure. The pump diaphragm moves down, transferring pressure to the fuel in the bypass chamber. On the one hand, fuel pressure presses on the pedal of the inlet valve, closing it. On the other hand, the flap of the exhaust valve opens and the fuel moves into the chamber with a strainer. In this mode, the process is repeated thousands of times per second, maintaining a constant fuel pressure in the channel with the filter. This channel supplies fuel to the lower fuel chamber, in a classic carburetor, it is called the float chamber. Here, the role of the float is performed by the membrane. The chamber is closed with a steel cover with a hole to communicate the membrane with the atmosphere. The membrane itself. Gasket. Shut off fuel needle. Needle rocker. Spring. Nozzle valve. Fuel channel idling and medium speed. For convenience, we will remove the stub and a rocker. The throughput of this channel is regulated by a screw with the letter L. Then this channel has three outlets to the carburetor diffuser. The first hole is behind the throttle valve, in the direction of air movement. Fuel from this port feeds the engine at idle. Further there are two more holes, they are fed with fuel in transient conditions at the moment the throttle is opened. Main fuel channel. The throughput of the main channel is regulated by the H screw, after which the channel leads to a check valve that passes fuel into the carburetor diffuser. Also, this valve is called, nozzle valve. Inside is a rubber sealing washer. It allows fuel into the carburetor diffuser, and does not allow air into the fuel chamber. To start a cold engine, close the choke. This contributes to the maximum vacuum in the carburetor diffuser, accelerating the filling of the fuel chamber with fuel. The shut-off fuel needle, supported by a spring through the rocker, blocks the fuel supply. During startup, when a vacuum is created in the diffuser and in the fuel chamber, the lower membrane bends inward under the action of atmospheric pressure from the outside, and with its rod, which is fixed on it, presses on the rocker, overpowering the spring. The needle opens the supply of fresh fuel, fuel fills the chamber, the pressure in the chamber increases, arching the membrane in the opposite direction. The needle shuts off the fuel supply, the process is repeated. When the engine starts to seize, the choke is opened and the engine is started. At idle speed, fuel is supplied through one or more holes under the throttle, depending on the degree of its opening. When the damper is closed, the vacuum zone is shifted to the last hole in the direction of air movement. The fuel, pressed by the atmosphere, tends to the low pressure zone. As the throttle valve opens, the vacuum zone shifts and increases. The remaining two holes are included in the work. When the throttle opens so much that a vacuum occurs above the nozzle valve, fuel pressure opens the check valve and fuel enters the diffuser. Further, mixing with air, it forms a fuel mixture and feeds the engine at operating speed. When the throttle closes, the vacuum zone again shifts to the idle holes, and atmospheric pressure begins to act on the injector valve washer. The washer locks the nozzle, this prevents the 
fuel chamber from airing. If there were no valve, air would be drawn in through the main fuel channel, which would adversely affect the operation of the carburetor. This can happen if the sealing washer gets stuck in the open position. Also, the washer can stick by cutting off the main fuel supply, in which case the engine will stall when the throttle is opened. It is also worth remembering that the smallest mode under the valve pedal and the pump will stop pumping gasoline, therefore, with special sterility, you should approach the cleaning and assembly of such carburetors. The filter mesh can become clogged and block the fuel path. You should also pay attention to membranes that can break. By default, the adjusting screws L and H should be backed out one and a half turns from tightening. Personally, in my Chinese chainsaw, from the store, the setting was as follows, the screw L was turned out one turn and the screw H was turned out one and a quarter. That's all, thanks for watching, until new videos.